So I had some, what they called at the restaurant, zucchini fries the other night that I loved. And I thought, wow, why not make them in my toaster oven? And yes, this is a recipe that I'm going to show you that is not in my pop it in the toaster oven cookbook. Uh, it was easy for me to turn this into kind of a grab and go sort of inspirational piece. So to start with, I had three small zucchinis and I sliced them thin lengthwise. I have a couple tablespoons of um, cold press olive oil here and um, I'm going to be using that to baste the baking pan and also to add to the zucchini and then I made up this mix I made up this mixture trying to kind of duplicate the flavors that were in those fries of the restaurant so what I did here is I had some parmesan cheese I added some breadcrumbs I have homemade breadcrumbs to it and then also I just went nuts I, I put in powdered garlic uh, dried basil spice from my garden uh, I got some really great Greek spice here that I love. I got it at the farmer's market. It's a feast for the gods, and I just love this spice. Um, and then I also have this sort of garden mix that I thought would be good. So um, I put all of that together in this little cup, and I'm going to be sprinkling that on the zucchini. But first, what I'm going to do is put the zucchini in a bowl. So there's the zucchini in the bowl. I have to say that I did... Um, I did taste this uh, mixture just to see if I had enough salt in it, and I think the flavors are going to be really terrific. And then I'm just going to add some oil to this, um, and then I'm going to mix this all around really well. Hmm, I'm inspired. I think I'm going to add some balsamic vinegar to this and then mix it really well. These slices tend to kind of want to stick together, so I'm seeing that I have to really stir it around to make sure everything is coated. Now I've gone ahead and preheated my toaster oven to 350, and I think I'm going to bake it for about 15 minutes and then broil it afterwards. And so while it's preheating, I have a broiling rack here. I don't know why I couldn't use a cookie sheet, but this is what I have because it came with my toaster oven and it's easy to clean. It fits perfectly. So that's the olive oil on there. And then I'm just going to put these on the broiling rack, and lay them down, try to keep them as separate as I can. Okay, so um, rack goes in and I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. Okay, that was um, that was 15 minutes at 3.50. What am I seeing here? Well, the pieces are getting smaller. They're cooking. I would say probably they're half done. And so I want to try to finish this process now with, um, with the broil. Okay, the rack goes back in. I've raised the, the um, shelf on this now, so broiling rack is going in closer to the broil. By the way, tough gloves. So if you're dealing with a hot oven like this, you're fully protected with gloves like this. I love them. So now I'm going to set the, the oven on broil. And then um, I'm thinking I'm going to, I don't know, I'm experimenting here. I'm going to do the timer for like 10 minutes and, uh, and check to see how the pieces are doing. All right, so this is what I did. I actually broiled um, these pieces for about 15 minutes, and then I turned them over and broiled them again for eight minutes, and this is what I got. It smells wonderful. Are, are these pieces crispy? No, but they're really well done, and I think some of the smaller pieces are sort of almost like burnt offering. But I'm going to taste them, and um, boy, this looks like a really good snack, though. Um, so let's 
do the taste tests. Well, I'm here in my studio, and I didn't really dress up much for this video because I'm working on my paintings here. And uh, I do have this wonderful zucchini. Uh, I put some chipotle sauce here. And I have to say, it's really good. The zucchini has turned into a whole different kind of flavor. It's not your normal zucchini flavor. And I think it's because the the stuff that I sprinkled on it, um, the garlic powder and all the spices and the cheese and everything, just melds right into these. So it really becomes something else. Really, it was a little more broiling than I thought I would have to do. Um, the, the slices were thick, though. I, if I slice them thinner in the mandolin, I think that it would take less time. But with broiling, it isn't like you have to watch anything. Now I know what the times are and what to expect. I can just put it in the toaster oven or pop it in the toaster oven, as they say. And by the way, you can buy my book anywhere. Yeah, Amazon, at your favorite bookstore, go in, say hi, and say, hey, do you have a copy of Pop It in the Toaster Oven? It's been around a long time. It's really good. I know, because I wrote all of the things in it myself. Did a lot of researching, just like I did today with this, to make the recipes perfect in every way, the timing good, the taste good, and the quality of the food good. So, check out my website, freeonlineartclasses.com. Yes, really free. You don't have to log in or give me your email. I don't want your email. <laughs> Unless you want to give it to me, I just want to teach you art. And you can always contact me on my website, freeonlineartclasses.com. So, back to work, back to snack, and try this. This is good. You know, I'm thinking is what, why not carrots, other kinds of root vegetables? I think if they are sliced thin enough, like with a mandolin or a food processor, you can broil these rather, sometimes what people call boring, uh, vegetables into something really exciting. And I'm going to keep on experimenting with this. I think next time I'll do carrots.